It is one million years ago on the continent of Australia, a harsh, brutal place ruled by reptiles and marsupials, many of them far larger than any of their modern-day relatives, such as Protemnodon, a species of wallaby over two metres tall and weighing 160 kilograms. They feed mostly during dusk and dawn, sleeping through the hottest parts of the day. As they graze, they are constantly scanning the area, looking for predators. However, they are looking in the wrong place. In the tall trees above them is a patiently waiting hunter. Thylaca Leo Carnifex is a master of ambush. This 120 kilogram carnivore has been sitting perfectly still in a tree for hours, watching the Protemnodon steadily move closer. And now, one of them is in the perfect position for her to strike. Steadily reorientating herself on top of the branch, she moves completely silently above the oblivious wallabies. With well-practiced grace, she darts down the trunk of the tree and leaps onto the prey, tackling it to the ground. Her secret weapon is the semi-opposable thumb on each hand that allows her to grip the prey, giving it no chance of escape. Her retractable claws sink into the victim's hide, and she goes for the neck. In one swift motion, she opens her jaws as wide as she can and clamps them around the back of the wallaby's neck. There is a sudden cracking sound as she breaks the victim's spine, killing it instantly. The hunt is over in a few seconds. It was so quick, the rest of the Protemnodon haven't even started to flee before the victim is killed. As they hop away as fast as they can, the thigh like a Leo stands on her hind legs and tail, making sure the ghost is clear. As she begins to feed, the secret of her quick kill is revealed. Her premolars are massive, as are the muscles connected to her jaws. This allows her to easily slice through flesh and deliver bone-shattering bites onto her prey, killing them quickly and efficiently. This wallaby is small fry compared to what she can go after, however. Even large megafauna are not safe from her species. The female eats her fill and then using her immense strength, drags the corpse up into the tree and secures it over a branch like a modern leopard. This will stop any scavengers from eating the leftovers. With her meal concluded, she will now sleep the rest of the night. However, under the midnight moon, the female is awoken by the sound of devils. Loud, harsh, screaming noises are the dead giveaway that these small scavengers are around. Closely related to modern Tasmanian devils, these are a larger mainland species, and a few have begun feeding on the scraps the female fire like a Leo has left behind, making their usual devilish screams. The female does her best to ignore them. However, it's when the smaller marsupials flee, and the sound of something lumbering through the undergrowth takes over that she is forced to fully wake up. Slithering towards the tree is a Megalania, the largest land lizard of all time. Similar in appearance to a Komodo dragon, but six meters long. Its forked tongue flicks out its mouth, tasting the air, and picks up the smell of dead flesh. As it peers upwards, it sees the fire like a Leo's kill in the branches, along with the now nervous female. Despite weighing over a ton, the massive reptile digs its immense claws into the bark of the tree and begins to climb. The female considers staying to defend her kill, but even on solid ground, she would have little chance of fighting off the Megalania, and leaps to the ground, leaving the giant to pry the carcass out of the tree. Although she has been evicted from her tree, fire like a Leo will sleep and hunt just about anywhere and the female will simply find another tree that suits her. Their adaptability has made them the top mammalian predators on the whole continent, and it will remain that way for hundreds of thousands of years to come. Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we will be breaking down my favorite extinct marsupial, Phylacaleo. Phylacaleo, or the marsupial lion, 
was a family of extinct marsupials with 10 different species, the largest being Phylacaleo carnifex, which will be the main species we cover today. It was first discovered in 1859 by Richard Owen in Victoria, and he described it as one of the fellest and most destructive of predatory beasts. As the largest of its family, Phylacaleo carnifex got up to 1.5 meters long, 75 centimeters high at the shoulder, and weighed between 120 and 160 kilograms, so similar to a modern jaguar. It is hard to believe that the closest living relatives to Phylacaleo are wombats. However, they separated from their herbivore ancestors around 30 million years ago. There is truly no predator like Phylacaleo today. The head alone is unique. It didn't have large canine teeth, but they did have long incisors, and their back premolars were huge, capable of incredible cutting and crushing power. In a way, they act like bolt cutters. It also had massive muscles connected to the jaws to aid in its crushing power. Now, there is a bit of confusion over how strong its bite was, with reports saying it has the strongest bite of any mammal ever. So, it sort of does. For its size, its bite force would be the strongest, but the actual force comes to slightly higher than a lion's. Still, for fine like a Leo to be able to produce such an incredible bite is nothing short of incredible. There was much debate over whether Phylacaleo was a true carnivore, that it perhaps it used its large teeth to get through tough plants, the so-called melon muncher theory. I just had to add that because it's one of my favourite names ever. But since it has no grinding teeth, this theory is no longer seen as valid. The legs of Phylacaleo are also rather odd. The front limbs were short but very strong, with retractable cat-like claws and a large semi-opposable thumb that it's theorized were used to disembowel prey. The joints and hands also had a lot more maneuverability in them as well, which we'll get into later. This means that Phylacaleo was not a fast runner, and it likely relied heavily on ambush. Its physical traits are all similar to arboreal animals, so it likely spent a lot of time in trees. Wherever it hunted, slept, or stored prey in trees, however, is harder to say. But the idea of it living similarly to a leopard seems very likely. Using strength and sharp weapons to bring down prey even larger than itself. Even giants, like Diprotrodon, the largest marsupial of all time. The tail was thick and muscular, much like a kangaroo, and may have allowed the animal to rear up and balance on its hind legs, freeing its forelimbs in climbing or to slash at prey. Being a marsupial, Phylacaleo would have been born and raised in a pouch. However, little is known about how they reared their young, or even how big their litters may have been. However, based on some fossil evidence, females might have left their young in caves while they went out hunting, until they were ready and old enough to go out on their own. The family of Phylacaleo was very successful, being found across the whole continent of Australia, only dying out about 30,000 years ago from climate change and potentially the arrival of humans. Since the extinction of Phylacaleo carnifex, no carnivorous mammal megafauna has existed in Australia. Still, it certainly left its mark on prehistory as one of the most powerful and ferocious carnivores of all time. But what do you think of Phylacaleo? Do you believe it was an arboreal hunter or more of a scavenger? Let me know what lesser known extinct creature you'd like me to do a breakdown on next. And until then, thank you for watching.